Welcome to using the shuffle chop. We often need to change the order of both channels and samples and the shuffle chop can help us with exactly this task. Let's take a closer look at how shuffling works. To begin, let's add a pattern chop here into our network and we'll use the pattern chop as a stand in for uh, incoming data that we might need to work with. Let's turn the number of samples down to say 20 and let's use the A key and the D key to turn on our dots per sample so we can actually see the samples here inside of our pattern. Now, one typical transfer transformation that we might encounter is we might need to take, say, a uh, single channel with multiple samples and turn that into multiple channels all with a single sample. So let's go ahead and grab a shuffle chop here and we can see how we might do that. Now here in our shuffle chop, we can go ahead and swap the channels and samples. And we've gone ahead and converted what was just one channel with many samples in it to many channels, all of which that have one sample. Now, sometimes we start with data that looks like this and we need to go the other direction. And in fact, we can use the shuffle chop to do exactly that type of transformation where we again swap channels and samples and we go back the other way. Now, sometimes what we need to do is we actually need to take these many channels and we need to order them into a set of channels that makes more sense. So let's say, for example, I wanted just the first half of the sine wave and then the second half of the sine wave. How could I do that? Well, let's go ahead and make a copy of our shuffle chop here. And what we might do instead is we might go ahead and select sequence n channels. Now what we're going to do here is we want to sequence every 10th channel. So here we can think of 0 through 9 becomes one channel and then 10 through 19 becomes our second channel. And that's why we end up with two channels here. Now this can be really helpful in lots of different circumstances. Now what other ways might we need to think about when we're working with uh, channels here? So let's go ahead and add another pattern to create another similar kind of use case. Now we'll do the same idea. We'll turn down the number of samples here. And this time I'm going to call this TY. Now I'm going to turn on our dots here. I'm going to make a copy of this pattern. This one I'm going to call TX. And let's go ahead and merge these two chops together. Now we might end up in a scenario here. Actually, let's make sure we change one other piece of our pattern here. Let's change this to say a ramp. Now, in this particular case, I might want to think about how I combine these two channels together. And I have a few options uh, that I might want to explore. So let's add a shuffle chop here to our network. One thing I typically might want to encounter or think about doing is how do I say take these mini channels and turn this into, say, just a single channel? And in fact, to do that, what we might think about doing is sequencing all of our channels. So if we sequence all channels, we'll see what we end up with here is we've taken all of our channels and connected them one right after another. Now that's an interesting way to think about how we might work with uh, some data that's shaped in this particular format. And another way that we might wanna make a transformation here to our data is we may wanna say, take all of our samples in all of our channels and convert that just into single channel. So we might, in that case, want to split all of our samples. What does that mean? That means that for every sample that we have, we create a new channel and we arrange them uh, one right after another. Now, this is a pretty interesting way to think about how we might arrange data. Uh, but there are some other ways that we might want to explore here as well. So let's go ahead and add another pattern chop and we'll take a look at one more complex kind of idea. So again, we'll turn down the number of samples to say 20. This is time, I'm gonna call this one say TY, and we'll say one through four. That's great. I'm gonna go ahead and make a copy of our pattern here. This one we'll call TX, and let's make this one a ramp. Now we're gonna go ahead and merge these two operators together for what looks like a set of uh, channels here where we have all of our TYs together and all of our TXs together. Now, this is great. Uh, and in some circumstances, this might be just what we need. But sometimes we actually need to rearrange this uh, in some different way. So what might that look like? Well, let's add a shuffle chop here to our network to see. Let's say I wanted to take TY and I want to append TX to it. So there what I might end up uh, 
needing to do is I want to sequence every nth channel. So I want to sequence every nth channel and I want to do every four. So I want to do ty and then four channels later, one, two, three, four, here, tx. I want to grab this channel and I want to append ty and tx. And then I'll repeat that same idea as we go down through our set of channels. Now this is great because this lets me create a single uh, set of channels. So I've taken eight channels and turned it into four. Lovely. Well, what happens if say, instead what I wanna do is I wanna sequence all my channels by name. So now what I've done is I've taken all of the TY channels and I've, appe I've appended them one right after another. And I've taken all the TX channels and I've appended them one right after another. So why have we done, why have we spent all this time kind of talking about how we shuffle? Well, we spend this time kind of understanding how we can shuffle our different samples and channels together because we often need to think about how this works when it comes to working with other devices, especially when it comes to driving lighting instruments. So let's take a look at what kind of idea we might need to think about there. So to get started, uh, let's first go ahead and uh, set up a kind of simple idea. Let, let's imagine that we have a grid SOP here. And this grid SOP is going to say represent a low poly or a low density screen. So we've gone ahead and turned on our viewer active with the A key. We use the W key to turn on our wireframe. So this is going to represent kind of a low density screen for, say, some lighting instruments. So we need to make a few other changes here. So one thing that I want to do is I want to make sure uh, that we only have, say, nine rows. And then I want to make sure that I have kind of square divisions here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab from my size here. I'm going to drag, whoops, 1.778. Let's grab our size X parameter, drop that on columns, and we'll use that and multiply it against me our rows. We need to spell rows correctly. And this will make sure that we've got a proportional set of divisions here so we have nice kind of square representations. So we might imagine, right, if we go ahead and turn on our display options and let's go ahead and turn on our points. Each one of these points represents a pixel that's gonna be in say an overhead array of uh, lighting fixtures. Well, how could we think about getting some color information there? Well, let's use a point SOP. And our point SOP is gonna allow us to make sure that we add our texture coordinates to our geometry. And we'll see why we need that in a moment. I'm gonna add a null SOP here. Next, I'm gonna convert this back into channel data. So we'll use the SOP2 chop. And this time around, I don't actually need to know my position information. What I wanna know right now is I wanna know these UVs. And these UVs are what we've just added by using our point SOP here. Why do we need these UVs? Well, let's go ahead and add a movie file in top here into our network. And let's select something a little more interesting, like say, let's grab maybe our Trillium. And we'll connect this to a null top here. And if I want to convert this to chop data, I can use the top two chop. And one of the superpowers of the top two chop is that it has an input. Now this input is just what it says. It's our sampling coordinates that are represented as UVs. So we'll use these UVs to actually find only the pixels that match up against the UVs from this grid. This is kind of a very convenient way to be able to find the UVs that we need from our grid SOP here. Now, I don't need my alpha channel information. I just have my RGB uh, channels. And let's turn on the dots here. Now, one thing that we run into when we're working with, say, uh, lighting instruments is that when we're talking to something for, over uh, ArtNet or streaming ACN or DMX, we need to arrange our data so that we compose our uh, messages or compose a kind of single channel so that it has our RGB data one right after the other. So I don't want to kind of append these all in a row. I need to make sure that I have uh, stacked together the red, green, blue value followed by the next red, green, blue value followed by the next and so on. Well, how do we do that? Well, we use the shuffle chop to do exactly that. And what we can do is we'll take all of our data here We'll use the shuffle chop and we'll sequence all channels. And if we sequence all channels here, what we'll end up with is we will end up with say one channel 
And this single channel now has our data arranged so that it's the red, green, blue value here from our first sample, followed by the red and green, blue in the second sample index, and so on. This now is ready to head out uh, with the DMX out chop. And this is one of the reasons shuffling is, is important is because it allows us to think about how we rearranged both channels and samples into formats that we can use for other types of devices.